as we look at J1, the key features that we want to look at for H1. Linear. What do you notice about all the variables in linear? They're always to the what power? X is to what power? Or an and Y. Always to the first. So something, if the X and Y are to the first power, that should be your key, like alarm going off. It is going to be linear. If it's quadratic, it's going to be x squared. So anytime you have to the second power, that's trying to tell you quadratic. Remember, we just did the vocab on at the beginning um, a couple of units ago. So vertex form could be standard, could be in our roots. Someone said, I know that this is x to the first and x to the first, but when you multiply that together, it gives you the x to the second, right? So we are looking at that. As we take a look at exponential, the key thing is that your variable is going to be to the x power when you are taking a look at that. So this is always your y-intercept, that's your a, and the b is what you're multiplying by. So one of the things that I'm going to be asking you to do in your homework is to not only identify linear, quadratic, exponential, or absolute value, I'm going to ask you sometimes to write an equation for it. So keeping in mind, right, this was our point-slope form. So when we were looking at point-slope, that's super nice because the only thing I really need to find is my slope and use any two points that I have. Okay? When I'm taking a look at slope-intercept, this one might be really easy to tell my y-intercept. Yeah. Not really, right? It's a fraction. But I can probably tell two points on the line. And then that's standard form. So x to the first gives me linear, and then absolute value, you need to have those two absolute value signs. So as you take a look at the next page down, I want you to identify, is it one of those four forms looking up above? So as you take a look up above in your notes, you want to identify, do I think it is absolute value? Does this graph look linear? Does it look like it is um, quadratic? Does it look exponential? So just look at how the lines are kind of tilted as we look at those. The first one, if we were looking at it, we might say as we looked at it, Eli, what? Linear. Could we easily tell the y-intercept of this? My b or y-intercept is located at? What are we looking at for my y-intercept? Zero, zero, negative one. Need to be set down. Set up. Okay, then I need to set up to take notes. Okay. So if we're looking at it, we got our y-intercept at zero, negative one. Can we tell our slope pretty easily for this one? If we are looking at it, what would be my slope? Rise over run. For each point. Rise over run would be two over one or two. So can I write my equation? Y equals slope and y intercept. 2x minus 1. So in your homework, you're going to be asked sometimes to just identify it. And if you can identify it, you're going to be asked to write the graph. You will probably not write the graphs for some of your exponential, and you probably won't write it for um, some of your um, quadratics at all. In this one, it's curved going up. We would say that that is, if we look up above in our examples, that is our exponential. And this one is going to be growth. Whereas the one on the bottom, this one still looks like a curve, it looks like an exponential, but this time instead of growth, it's going to be a decay, if you remember that. So it's been a little while since we did growth and decay and exponential. As you take a look at that in the middle, or the one on the top, as you look at the one on the top, what does our graph look like? Which of our four different types up above, what would you say, Raymond? four types of above, what does that last one in that row look like? Quadratic. Quadratic. It looks like it kind of goes down and then it heads up again, so we are definitely looking at quadratic. And if I'm looking at that last one, what would you say, Grace? Absolute value. Absolute value. So you're just going to be asked when you do the homework questions um, what type it is first. You might be looking at a graph and just be asked this. And then there's going to be some when we look at a table, and you're going to be asked to write the equation. Okay? 
So when you write an equation, one of the first things you're going to notice is notice that my x values are increasing by 1. There's going to be one of our examples that the x values are going in the opposite order. They're decreasing by 1 instead of adding 1. So you just got to be aware of the different situations. Here, if there is a constant difference and we are adding or subtracting, that's my linear. So if I was looking at this one, this is my, one of my key points, right? That's my y-intercept. I would write this equation to be y equals, my rate of change would be 3x, and I'm looking at plus 5, because I know it's 0, it's at 5. When I look at a common ratio here, I just I might start looking and think first time that I'm adding, but I notice that I add 0.25, and then I add 0.5, and then I add 1, so it can't be addition. So I look and try and see if it's multiplication. In this case, it was multiplying by 2. So when I am looking at this one, my equation in exponential is my y-intercept, 1, times, what am I multiplying by? 2. And if I put it to the x power. And then what you want to do is you want to check. Like if I plug in 1, do I get 2? If I plug in 1 here, 2, times, two to the first is 2 times 1. If I plug in negative 2, and I put 2 to the negative 2 power, that's 1 fourth times 1, gives me 0.25. Okay? The one that I probably will not have you write is the quadratic. So it says for quadratic functions, you need to find what's called the second difference. So you might look at these numbers and go, okay, I notice that this is minus 2, then plus 2, then plus 6, and plus 10. None of these are the same. So then you find the difference between negative 2 and positive 2 is 4. 2 to 6 is 4, 6 to 10 is 4, that's called our second difference. If you get a sec second difference in a table, we're going to write down that it is quadratic as we look at those. So we are looking at our tables on that next page. And as you look at those tables, what I want you to identify is which of our types. Multiply by 3, right? Times 3, times 3. So we have exponential. If I'm going to write the equation... What do I know my y-intercept is as I'm looking at it, Kathy? So we start at negative 3, that's my y-intercept, times 3 to the x power. Now remember, sometimes we have x minus 1 here, but if I check this and I plug in 1, if I plug in 1 for x, I'm going to have 3 times negative 3, that gives me negative 5. If I plug in 3, that's 3 to the third, 27, times negative 3, gives me negative 81. So I can kind of check it by plugging in my x values. If I'm looking at the next one, what do we see in that next one as we are looking at that one, Ava? What kind of equation would you say? Um, linear. Okay, so we're looking at linear because we are adding what? Or subtracting. each time, right? So each time we're subtracting 8 all the way, so we're going to have linear. And if we're going to write our equation, Tatum, you ready? y equals rate of change is negative 8. Do we need to find the y-intercept if we want to write an equation for linear? What's the easiest form? Point, well, what point do you want to use, Tatum? You can choose any of them, right? Which one do you want? Two and negative 23. Okay, 2 and negative 23. So she's going to have x minus 2 plus or minus 23. That's a perfect equation. Could you have simplified this and got it down so that you would have seen 0 and negative 7 for the y-intercept? Sure. But I would take any form of that equation. Now, when you check in the back, you might see this equation written as y equals negative 8x minus 7, because what they did was they multiplied negative 8 times negative 2 and got 16, and 16 plus negative 23 is the negative 7, right? So they just got rid of it, but I would take it in any form. As we look at that next one, first off, 96 to 150, if you haven't figured these common differences, do that. We're going to look at these last two. The last second to the last one here, I can definitely tell as I look at that. What would you say, Ben, as we look at it? Linear, exponential, quadratic. So how about if I made the table? So is there a constant change? 
Yeah. Oh, that was Lynn. Okay, because why? I know we're skipping. We're coming back to that one. I just want you guys to find the differences on your calculator if you have all the other pieces. So what do you have for this one? You were subtracting eight, right? But is that right? Or adding eight? Eight. Adding eight. Okay. So here is where I've had people look at this and they go, "Oh, so the slope is eight. Look at my x values." This is decreasing by one, not increasing by one. So if I actually was looking at this table, it might be better to go with negative one, then negative two, then negative three, right? And at negative one, we had zero. And at negative two, we had negative eight. And at negative three, we had negative 16. So now as I add one, what's happening, we are our slope here is negative 8, not positive 8. Because this table is like written in the wrong order, right? If you're looking at a table, if you're going to increase by 1, you want to have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So our slope here is like we're going this way. And in this case, I definitely agree it was linear. And I would, again, write this one in fourth slope form. Negative 8. And we might go with x plus 2, minus 8, right, if we use this point. Could I have used a negative 1, 0? Sure. So someone else, if they were looking and writing their equation, and someone else gave me this equation and said y equals negative 8, and they said x plus 1 plus 0, and they didn't put this back here, that would be totally correct also. Last one, as we look at that. Parker, what's happening? Get the number. You get the next. Adding, multiplying, multiplying, multiplying by three. So right away, since we're multiplying, it's exponential. Okay. So once I know we're multiplying by three, time, I'm now going to take a look at writing my equation. Can we tell the y-intercept at zero? So if this is times three to go up each time, I could divide by three, right, and get negative two. So if I'm writing my equation, I'm going to have y equals my y-intercept is negative 2. And then I'm going to have times, which is my growth factor, 3 to the x. So if I check it and I plug in 1, 3 to the first is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. If I check the 3, if x is 3, 3 to the third is 27. 27 times negative 2 gives me negative 54. So I could check it with more than one of them. So that's kind of what you want to do when you are looking at those. So hopefully kind of writing the equations, kind of some of that will come back to you, especially as we finish this. So what I want you to do on this second to last page, you are going to write an L for linear, E for exponential, Q for quadratic, and you will notice that there is also absolute value. So please put an A for absolute value. So just fill those in right now. Put the letter right below each of them has to have an exponent. So I know exponential, the exponent can't be 2 because that's quadratic. Exponential, I might look at absolute value and absolute value. Linear is my variables to the first power. I got linear, I have linear. Y here is to the first power. I have linear here, they're both to the first power. This one is linear, so I have quite a few linears. And so my last one that I was looking at is quadratic. That's when anything is to the second power, so all of my quadratics. Okay? So you're going to be asked to identify them as you are looking at your homework. And then the last thing that we are taking a look at is if you look at um, this lesson, so at this, at this practice problem. So they're going to ask you, what does it look like? So you're going to answer it's either linear, exponential, quadratic, probably not absolute value. Right. So, you're going to plot at 0, 18,254. 700, we keep going up. When do we go above 20,000? Over at 4, right? So, if you would please take a look at that graph and draw your graph. And then the next thing we want to take a look at is what's our common difference. So, we're going to do that subtraction. Oh, you know what? We forgot that one, didn't we? Did we go back here? We never did this middle one. What did we have for 
our common difference. What did we start out with here? 96 to 150. How about 54? And then the next one was 66. And the next one was 70. And so right off, I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh man. And if I tried to multiply, taking 96 times something to get 150, that doesn't work. So it can't be exponential. So now I look at what's called that second difference. So that's when you look at from 54 to 66, the difference is 12. And from 66 to 78, 12. So this is quadratic. And I will not ask you, looking at something this ugly, to write an equation. You won't have to on the test, you won't have to on the final from the table. Write anything, like write that equation. I had some people who were working on their final reviews and they said, you know, Mrs. Thompson, the systems of quadratic and linear, we do that Thursday and Friday this week. So it is coming up. So that's why those ones on the final review. But if we look at this one, what's our common difference if you were looking at those? So if I look at the first one and I'm subtracting, we should have had the score 76 on them all right. Please subtract those last ones. So if I call on you or as soon as you get them so that we can put those in quickly. So I'm going to have the next one for subtracting 19, 215 minus 7, 18 plus 60 should be 485. The next one is for ladies, all right? 40. 40. The last one, 40 also. Else. Okay, so I am asked, what does it look like? What kind of model? What would you say? Linear, exponential, quadratic? It looks like a what? Line? Looks like it is linear. So if it's linear, I want to try and do y equals mx plus b, or I might do y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1, right? But this one, I like this one because it gives me my y-intercept, right? My y-intercept is right here, right? This is my b. So when I'm looking at this, I look at the numbers and it's a model. So should it come out to be exactly the right slope? This one is 476, this is 485, and these two are 480. Do you think we could say the slope is about, it changes almost every year by 480? That makes sense. So when you look at it, the slope here, 480. Does it have to be exact? I had someone, sometimes people get really picky, like that they get it so close. Could you add all four of those and divide by four? Yes. But again, this is above, this is this is below, this is above, these two are in the middle. 480x plus 18, 254. I'm done. I have my equation, the slope and the y-intercept. I could have used one of these other points and wrote it out like this, but why make it look ugly, right? If I can get the slope in my intercept, you want to be done that. So your homework that you're going to work on is not due until Wednesday. Your concentration should be take a look at Pearson quizzes, take a look at finishing the review um, from 603, take a look at finishing um, the... 11 and 13 in your workbook and doing those graphs. Go back and make sure that I-10 is done. So it says you're doing 6 to 20 all. The first ones just say which model. That's where you're going to just say linear, exponential, quadratic, or absolute value, and it's usually not absolute value. And then they ask you what type, use common difference and ratios, and you don't have to write the equation until you get to 15. And notice you're not doing it for 15 because it's probably quadratic. And you don't need to, we don't need to do that at this point. Okay? So, if there's quadratic.